Now to the GOP slide into the party of Trump, part deux. The ongoing excommunication of the number three Republican in the House, Liz Cheney. Now, nothing new on that front to report tonight as no news. Well, it's bad news for Cheney. She's all but assured to be booted from leadership as early as next week. Cheney's one and only sin, it seems, among her, well, party, is her unwillingness to put that party above the country and parrot Donald Trump's big election lie. The Capitol riot was the last straw for Cheney. She explained why in an op-ed to the Washington Post. Quote, the Republican Party is at a turning point and Republicans must decide whether that we are going to choose truth and fidelity to the Constitution in the immediate wake of the violence of January 6th. Almost all of us knew the gravity and the cause of what had just happened. We had witnessed it firsthand. History is watching, she went on. Our children are watching. We must be brave enough to defend the basic principles that underpin and protect our freedom and our democratic process. I am committed to doing that no matter what the short-term political consequences might be. But Cheney's party, they're apparently not listening, or at least not most of them. They have, as a group, made a deal with a political devil. Insurrection and undermining elections be damned. They've decided they cannot regain power without Donald Trump, and they're willing to say, well, say so right on camera. Just say to my Republican colleagues, can we move forward uh, without President Trump? The answer is no. I've always liked Liz Cheney, but she's made a determination that the Republican Party can't, can't grow with President Trump. I've determined we can't grow without him. What an unbelievable naked calculation. So Republicans in the House, they're expected to turn to this woman, Elise Stefanik, Republican congressman from New York, as Cheney's replacement. Now, I should tell you, for what it's worth, Stefanik was actually a moderate, far more of the middle than Cheney when she was elected in 2014. She was an ally of Paul Ryan. She backed John Kasich against Trump in 2016, and she voted against the Trump tax cuts. But... She saw an opening during the first Trump impeachment hearings, and she decided to put herself center stage as an ardent defender of the Donald. That made her a rising star in the party and, of course, a Trump favorite. But she's less conservative, as I said, than Cheney by miles. This according to Lifetime Conservative Ratings. That's compiled by the American Conservative Union, the same folks who run the annual CPAC conventions. She's not more conservative than Cheney or more Republican. She's just more of a Trumpist. And as the party cuts the floor out from under Cheney's legs, it has done nothing to clip the wings of its two biggest problem child. Trump supporters Matt Gates, he of the credible sex trafficking and sex with an underage girl allegations, and Marjorie Taylor Greene, she of the QAnon Kool-Aid, who's been stripped of all her House committees because of the craziness, both co-starring in a rally tonight in Florida. They're allowed on the stage of today's GOP, apparently Liz Cheney, is not. So what the heck is going on with today's Republican Party? And is the Republican Party of Reagan, Bush, and McCain now gone for good? For that, we turn to former Connecticut congressman and good friend to the show, Chris Shades. Chris was known as the last Republican in New England after 2008 election, back when being a Republican had a different definition. You know, we've had this conversation, Chris, many times um, over the term of Trump. But if I told you January 7th that the Republican Party would still be the party of Trump and that anyone who's spoken ill word of him, let alone his role in the riots, would be drummed out of the party leadership, would you have believed it at that point? Yes, I would have believed it. Um, I would have hoped that it, that wouldn't be the case. Um, but people are scared of Trump. Um, Donald Trump um, has a following, and he is willing to go after anyone who opposes him and, and literally obliterate them from public life. And um, in the process, uh, if you support him, uh, he, then you're his best friend. So the bottom line, most Republicans who support him do not respect him, do not like him, uh, fear uh, what he can do, uh, but they are not going to tangle with him. So they're kind of like slaves. 
you know, Lindsey Graham said, uh, you know, the only way we're going to grow our party is with Trump. Do you think he believes that or do you think he's saying, listen, um, we probably can't ever win another general election uh, being the party of Trump in the, on a national level, but I don't want to risk losing a primary race or any of my friends do if we dare cross him. Is it fear or do they actually believe their only future is if they're attached to Trump? Um, well, first, let me just comment on the significance of what he said. What he's saying is, um, I'm going to support Donald Trump in spite of the fact that he refused to accept the verdict of the American people. He was defeated decisively, uh, and he encouraged, promoted uh, in, an insurrection that cost the lives of, of individuals in the Capitol, injured many, uh, and made us the, frankly, I wouldn't say the laughing stock of the world, but uh, we kind of look like a banana republic. So uh, we've lost our moral authority to tell anyone else what to do. So, you know, that's the significance of uh, the negative significance of what they're doing. They're supporting a man who did this. Now, the second part is he can defeat almost any Republican in a primary. So they're afraid of him. And um, they are only six votes away from being in the majority. So they figure, oh my goodness, if we support Donald Trump, we can get those six seats and then we'll be in the majority. Um, so the Republican Party is a tribe. Uh, it's not uh, uh, an organization that puts the country first. Uh, now, um, under the leadership of those who are serving in Washington, it is so sad, so sad. Hey, Chris, take all the morality out of this and what's good for country and not, and just the pure brass political tax. Trump lost by nearly 7 million votes. The hand-picked primary opponents that he picked, a lot of them lost. He was responsible for losing Georgia both seats here, and that's why they don't run the Senate, let alone the House or the White House. He doesn't even have a Twitter feed anymore or a social media profile. I don't understand what they're so afraid of. They had an opportunity if they stuck together that they could have broken the fever. McConnell went there. McCarthy even went there on January 6th. Why did they buckle their knees when they had the chance to finally get them out from under them? Well, just think of Ted Cruz, even. I mean, Ted Cruz, his own father was accused of, of being somehow involved in the assassination of, of, of President Kennedy, accused by President Trump. So, I mean, it's astonishing in that regard. But, but we've already basically said it. It's just hard to accept it. And what we're saying is, he has the ability to kill. He doesn't have the ability to elect. Um, and so in a primary, he may defeat you and you could have gotten elected. And the person he supported will probably get defeated. He does not care. You know, it's amazing tonight, Chris. We've got Matt Gates and Marjorie Taylor Greene having rallies. Um, Green raised more than three million bucks in just the first quarter this year. Uh, Josh Hawley's got some unbelievable fundraising totals as well. It, I, I, you're right. There's a following there, whether we want to admit it or not. But what would you do if you were still in Congress, or if you were the Adam Kinzingers of the world, or even the Liz Cheney's at this point? Do you say, you know what, I, I could create some coalition with some moderate Democrats here, um, even though Liz Cheney's no moderate. And at least I can have some real power in a newly reconstructed Washington, maybe. Well, first off, Liz Cheney is a very, very conservative member of Congress from Wyoming. Um, she represents that district exactly in terms of the public policy issues that uh, people there would, would demand. And it's not because she's not like that. She was raised there. She lived there, obviously, all her life or most of her life. And so... Um, She's just very representative of the people, except for one thing. Um, she uh, said something that was very truthful. She said he led an insurrection. She said he lied about uh, the fact uh, that he didn't lose the election. And that's all she said. And, um, and then she said, obviously, that our future doesn't belong with him. And she's right. So um, I would be proud to be 
Liz Cheney. And if I was voted out of my seat, I would consider it a, a badge of honor. And I would be a very active member uh, around the country trying to get uh, sensible people to see what Donald Trump has done to the Republican Party and to our nation. Oh, I'll give you this final thing. Um, and I probably already know the answer after if you lead an insurrection and, and you still are, are deemed the head of a political party, probably nothing will break this, not an Access Hollywood tape, impeachments, etc. But there are active um, probes into President Trump. Probably the most advanced is happening um, at the Manhattan uh, DA's office. But you've got other ones as well. Is there any revelations, including if the president knew what was percolating before the 6th, was told about what was going on while the riots and never lifted a finger? Is there anything that could break his hold on this party? Um, you know, even if he was in jail, it would look like an indictive act on the part of, of Democrats. And that's the, uh, that's the challenge. I mean, it, what's so terrible is we, are, we, we truly look like a banana republic. You know, uh, the the person in power uh, loses, doesn't accept it, accuses the others of stealing the election. I mean, I was with a, a friend, not a friend, an acquaintance, um, and he said, there's no way that Donald Trump lost this election. There's no way that Biden got more votes than Donald Trump. And he said it, and that's what he's, he's allowed himself to believe. So... Um, uh, you know, we just have to hope that there are, are more people uh, like Liz Cheney and that there will be people totally outraged that she would lose, frankly, to a member of Congress from New York who in no way has distinguished herself. No, and she will have lost her seat for telling the truth. Um, and yeah, like, she will uh, have, but, but you know what? Big deal. Yeah. I mean, in other words, from her standpoint, uh, saying the truth, uh, matters more than being the leader. Stay out of trouble. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Okay. God bless. <laughs> and up next, investigating and prosecuting sexual assaults inside the U.S. military. For years, that was done by the military itself, often putting victims into impossible positions just for the chance to serve their nation. But that may be about to change. We're going to go into depth on that after this.